History 101 General Education Question The one who colonized the Philippines from the Spaniards was, is it A. Ferdinand Magellan, B. Miguel Lopez de Legazpi, C. Antonio Pigafetta, or D. Jose Vasco? I'll give you 5 seconds to finalize your answer. Time's up. Now let's rationalize the question. Now remember the technique na sinabi ko sa mga previous ko na mga video. Every time sasagot tayo ng mga questions, the first thing that we should do is to find clue. After finding the clue na nasa stem or nasa question, then that's the time. Proceed tayo sa mga options and let's practice or let's do elimination method. Let's cancel those options na hindi naman related sa question. Now let's do that technique again. Now for this question, ang clue natin is colonized the Philippines from the Spaniards. Ibig sabihin, the word is colonized and from the Spaniards. Now let's go to the option and let's do elimination method. Let's cancel D, Jose Basco. It's because Jose Basco, siya ang famous sa tobacco monopoly. And remember that because lumabas din yan siya before sa board exam. Next, cancel C, Antonio Pigafetta. It's because si Antonio Pigafetta, siya ang chronicler ni Ferdinand Magellan, in short, para siyang secretary sa expedition. Siya ang nagsusulat or ang sumusulat kung saan sila nakapunta and even siya yung nagde-describe sa place and mga tao na kanilang nakasalamuha. Now, we only have two options left, Ferdinand Magellan and Miguel Lopez de Legazpi. Now, mali po ang sagot na Ferdinand Magellan. It's because si Ferdinand Magellan hindi niya na-colonize ang Philippines because namatay siya sa Battle of Mactan. And another thing, si Ferdinand Magellan hindi naman siya Espanyol. Isa siyang Portuguese but then ang dinala niya sa kanyang expedition is ang Spain na government. So pag ang question naka-colonize sa Pilipinas galing sa mga Espanyol, sagot is Miguel Lopez de Legazpi. And also, Si Miguel Lopez de Legazpi ang first governor general in the Philippines. Ibig sabihin, siya ang unang Espanyol na nakagawa ng sariling gobyerno sa Pilipinas and ang first nila na colonize is ang Cebu. History 101 General Education Question through periodicals and pamphlets, Jose Rizal and other mestizos and pensionados in Madrid formed the propagandist movement to appeal to reformers in the Spanish administration in the Philippines. Which of the following was not a product of the propagandist movement? Is it A. La Solidaridad B. Fray Botod C. Kalayaan D. Dasal at Tuxohan I'll give you 5 seconds to finalize your answer. Time's up. Let's now rationalize the question. Now, every time sasagot tayo ng board exam question, the first thing that we should do is to find clues. Hanapin natin sa STEM ang clue. So, for this question, ang clue po natin is nasa last part, not a product of the propagandist movement. Hahanapin natin ang hindi kasali sa kilusang propaganda. Now, what is propaganda movement? When we say propaganda movement, ito yung peaceful campaign for reforms. When we say peaceful campaign, ibig sabihin, ang laban na lang natin sa mga Espanyol ay through paper and pen, through newspapers, through pagsusulat lamang at hindi by force. And pagkilos ang propaganda, ang nagtatag nito ay ang triumvirate na sila, Jose Rizal, Graciano Lopez Haina at Marcelo H. Del Pilar. Now, ang letter A na La Solidaridad, hindi po siya ang sagot. It's because when we say La Solidaridad, ito yung official na newspaper ng propagandist movement. Ibig sabihin, part siya ng propaganda. Ang hinahanap is not part. Next, B, Fray Buton. Ang Fray Buton still kasali din siya sa propaganda movement because ang writer nito ay si Graciano Lopez Haina. Next, we only have two options left, kalayaan at ang dasalan at tuksohan. Now, based dito sa dalawa, ang correct answer is we have kalayaan. Bakit? Because ang kalayaan, yan po ang official na newspaper ng KKK. At alam natin na ang katipunan, hindi siya peaceful campaign. Ang katipunan, ang gusto nila is by force. Kaya ang hindi kasali, kalayaan. History 101 General Education Question 
Who was the Philippine general who lost his life in the Battle of Tired Pass? Is it A. Jose Rizal, B. Gregorio del Pilor, C. Antonio Luna, or D. Juan Luna? Now, based on the question, ang clue po natin dito is Battle of Tired Pass. So, pag Battle of Tired Pass, automatically i-cancel natin ang pangalan na A. Jose Rizal. Kasi hindi naman related si Jose Rizal sa Tirad Pass. Next, cancel natin si Delta, Juan Luna, si Potasio, kasi siya ang sikat na painter. Next, cancel din natin si Antonio Luna, kasi hindi naman siya sikat sa Battle of Tirad Pass. So for this, the correct answer is Gregorio del Pilar. Again, pag Battle of Tirad Pass, correct answer is Gregorio del Pilar. Prof. Ed 101 Sample Question Which religious missionaries arrived first in the Philippines? Is it A. Dominicans, B. Franciscans, C. Augustinians, or D. Jesuits? Now, ito siya na question, isa ito sa pinakamadaling ma-remember sa board examination. Para madali nating ma-remember ang pagkakasunod-sunod ng mga missionaries na dumating sa Pilipinas, gagamit tayo ng mnemonics. When we say mnemonics, isa itong technique, isang strategy, wherein gumagamit tayo ng mga keywords or sometimes mga rhymes para mas madali nating ma-remember ang important information and makonect natin ang new knowledge sa ating prior knowledge. Now, pag ang question is more on religious missionaries in the Philippines, i-remember lang po natin ang all foreigner jump down the river box. Again, ano yung i-remember? All foreigner jump down the river box. All, A, ang nauna, it stands for Augustinians. Foreigners, F, it stands for Franciscans. Jump, jump, J, it stands for Jesuits. Down, it stands for D, Dominicans. R, River, Recollects. And then we have B, Banks, Benedictines. All foreigners jump down the river banks. So pag ang question, ano ang pagkasunod-sunod ng ating early missionaries in the Philippines? We have Augustinians, Franciscans, Jesuits, Dominicans, Recollects, and Benedictines. And based on the question, the correct answer is, pag first missionary, answer is Charlie Augustinians. Again, Charlie Augustinians. Hi, let's answer another Prof. Ed question. Which, according to RA 9155, is considered as the heart of the formal education system? Is it A. Pupil, B. Teacher, C. Classroom, or D. School? I'll give you 5 seconds to finalize your answer. Okay, time's up. Now, let's rationalize this question. Now, in this question, ang clue natin dito is heart of the formal education system. Again, it's the heart, and this is according to RA 9155. So, may nakastipulate na batas, so needed natin i-identify kung ano yung RA 9155. Now, when we say RA 9155, it is an act instituting a framework of governance for basic education, establishing authority and accountability, renaming the Department of Education, Culture, and Sports as the Department of Education and for other purposes. And in Section 1, ang short title nito is, This Act Shall Be Known as the Governance of Basic Education Act of 2001 and sa time ito ni Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. Now, as you can see here, my screenshot ako with regards to RA 9155, Section 2, Declaration of Policy, but proceed tayo sa may baba na part. The school shall be the heart of the formal education system. It is where children learn. Schools shall have a single aim of providing the best possible basic education for all learners. So, verbatim, ang nakasulat ang school, ang heart of formal education system according to RA 9155. Now, balik tayo sa question. Which, according to RA 9155, is considered as the heart of the formal education system? It's not the pupil, hindi ang teacher, hindi ang classroom, but the correct answer is school. Prof. Ed 101 Teaching Profession Pia took the lead last March 2015. Unfortunately, she failed in the examination. Is she qualified for the position of paraTeachers? Is it A. No? B. Yes, if her lead rating is 71 to 74. C. Yes, if her lead rating is below 75. Or D. Yes, if her lead rating is 70 to 74. I'll give you 5 seconds to finalize your answer. 
Time's up. Let's now rationalize the question. Now, based on the question, ang clue natin dito is si Tia nag-failed sa exam. Ang question, qualified ba siya na maging para-teachers? Now, before answering this question, let's first identify ano ba yung mga para-teachers. Meron bang ganito na term? When we say para-teachers, nakastipulate yan siya under RA 9293 or also known as the Act Amending Certain Sections of RA 7836. Ano pala yung RA 7836? Yan yung Philippine Teachers Professionalization Act of 1994. Sa time ito ni Ramos, we're in a on tayo ng licensure examination for teachers. Ibig sabihin, ang 7836 may mga sections na na-change or na-amend pagdating sa 9293. And isa sa mga naging amendments ay ang pagkakaroon ng mga para-teachers. When we say para-teachers, ito yung mga Uh, failed, mga nag-failed sa licensure examination for the professional teachers with, take note, a rating of not lower than 5 percentage points from the passing general average. Ibig sabihin, ang passing general average is we know it's 75. Ang mga para teachers, 5 percentage percentage points lower than 75. Ibig sabihin, ang Average nila ay 70, 71, 72, 73, 74. And ang mga para-teachers, sila yung maa-assign sa areas wherein may shortage or absence of a professional teacher identified or provided by the Department of Education and the ARMM, Education Department. So again, we have para-teachers that is under RA 9293. Ang percentage points nila, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74. Balik sa question. Ang correct answer is, we have yes and that is D. Yes, if her let rating is 72, 74. So sila yung mga para teachers. Pero again, hindi para teachers ang aim natin. Kailangan LPT, Licensed Professional Teachers.